Okay, I've got the camera sitting in the top here and we're just going to pop the head off from here. Um, main reason I want to play around with the top dead center and the injection pump timing and just show you how some of that works as we go. So we're probably going the long way, but that's all right. So to get the cylinder head off, we have one, two, three, four, five nuts. Then we have one, two, three, four, five, hang on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight short bolts. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine long ones. So you'll need a three quarter socket. And in my case, I'm just going to see if the Makita BWT450 is up to the task. And it looks like, well, so far. Now you tension the head in a particular order. I've never, I've never known of one that we had to undo it in a particular order, but I wouldn't mind betting with some of the some of the more modern engines that may be a thing. Get in there. That wasn't good. Okay, after all that noise, that should be it. So once again, with all of these, I like to put them in the tappet cover, in the rocker cover, whatever you'd like to call it. Because they come out of that cavity under the rocker cover. So you'll notice under the nuts, there's no washers at all. Yet under the bolts, there's a washer on every one. So just something to take note of, I suppose. Well, not I suppose, definitely. Now with the head bolts, what you look at with a head bolt is if they've been over tensioned in their life, where the thread is here, they will probably be over tensioned. So, you can see they stick out so much. So pretty well, the amount they stick out of the head and the amount of thread, I may be able to do a visual for that, and the amount of thread. So there's just a little bit more thread than there is. That one might be easier. And over here. Yeah, there's just a little bit more thread than there is clearance under here. So you know that right up to about there, the last couple of threads is in the block. Now if the threads are going to stretch, these bolts are going to stretch, they're going to stretch here within that top two or three threads. So if you measure the thread down here and measure up through there, and these threads are quite a bit um, skinnier where the bolt stretched, chuck them. Now they're a grade eight bolt half UNC and the bolts you get will probably have a little bit more thread than this on them probably up to about there I'd say but the maximum strength of a bolt as I believe is one and a half times the width so on a half inch bolt one and a half times the width is three quarters of an inch of thread is as strong as that thread can ever be so any extras waste but anyway keep have a look at that have a look at all the bolts now this is a short bolt versus a, oh, hang on. Yep. Now, I think you can really see it with that bolt there. This bolt here, you see how it's chunky all the way? 
this one here, I reckon that's wasted a little bit. I don't know whether it's just my eyes. Anyway, we probably haven't got to worry with this one. Oh, now that's tight. <laughs> that's a good thing. So we don't want to go chiseling in, chiseling in here with a screwdriver or anything like that. We want to find a place where we can get a little bit of purchase on the cylinder head. Like there. It'll help give it a little lift. So that's coming up there. I'll try the same around the back. Okay, so if I had a good breakfast this morning, I should be able to lift this off. I feel like I'm too short. Oh, shit. <laughs> Bloody thing. Okay. I'll do a little bit of cheating. this again a little let's get it to start a little bit we don't want to mark the head at all we have to be careful playing around here It's actually getting caught on the studs a little bit on the other side there. I might try and stand on something so I can get a bit of stand on the crusty milk crate. There we go. By lifting it a bit, I could get my fingers in under. So let's try and tip this up and show you what we have. All right, I'll support the head. I'll lift the camera. And we'll have a little bit of a chat about this, see what we can see. Okay, is there a tail to tell? Probably not by the look of it. Looks like we have a new inlet valve here, nice and shiny. Now this was the one that showed a little bit of water on the injector from memory. That looks okay. Look, you can see how the, machine, the head has been machined through here. The valves are all sitting at a, an even height. This one here is stuck open slightly. Now, if you recall, when we checked the rockers on the back, number four exhaust, it was quite sloppy. And the reason is, um, no, that's an inlet. So the second one in, I remember the second one in was loose and the back one was tight. So you can see a little bit of burn around here from where the injector had a bit of a squirt, I think. But this valve, when you run your finger over the inlet valves and check the height, this one is higher. So I believe the tractor has sat with this valve open a little bit in the past. But you can see there's a lovely job um, machining the head, you can see. Now, in between the cylinders here, there's no, no blow through from a worn head gasket there at all. That's nice and neat. 
your pre-combustion chambers are here. You can just see the little little circles there. Well, I believe that's a good head. And I, apart from that, but I think popping the head apart and cleaning that and lapping it, I think we may get away with that for use on another project. Okay. We'll put this down here. And we'll drop in here. We'll bring the camera down a bit. We'll have a look at what we can here. Now the head gasket, we're looking for full circles all the way around. It's staying in focus now and then I look and it looks a bit blurry. It's hard to say. I'll, um, anyway. The head gasket looks like it's in good nick. There's no burnt areas at all. It's looking good there. Now, the fire ring is curled down. So you'll see you have a flat edge at top here and the edge of the fire ring is curled down. So the fire ring's under here. Boy, that feels like it's been machined. Oh, I don't know if it has or it hasn't. But anyway, we'll have a fiddle with it. So the gasket looks good. It didn't have a blown head gasket, but it had a tight valve. Now when we turn the engine over here, look at this, common. On these 23C engines, the liners are the loosest, sloppiest fit. <laughs> I don't know why they've got to be like that, but they are. They're dry liners too, so. So you're not going to, you haven't got the worry that you have with the petrol engines of the um, liners lifting and the gasket around the bottom buggering up on you. But what I would like to do is I think that there feels like top dead centre. So firing on number one probably. Um, it can be firing on number one or number four with the pistons up. Um, with the pistons up, the keyway will be down and until we have a look inside the side of the injection pump there, we won't know. Um, the other way we can check, if we're not 100% sure, if it's firing on number one, we would expect number four rockers to be rocking. So we can feel that. And it is. So we know we're firing on number one. I should probably hold these liners down, but I'm not too worried about it. It's just an old, old dunger engine. So later on, we'll put a dial gauge here. We'll just check we're on top dead centre, and we'll see how the engine's been timed. So, all right, that might do for this little bit. Um, we'll drop the camera down the side, and we'll go through checking timing and things like that.